Hello. In this class, we will discuss about the structure of ecosystem, the concept of ecosystem and the components of ecosystem. So this is a brief uh, video uh, about the concept, structure and components of ecosystem. So we know that the Earth's life support system, it consists of mainly four important components, the geosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere. So what is a geosphere? It is the part of Earth's system that consists of rock, minerals and sediments. So it includes the thin outer crust of the Earth, the molten mantle of the Earth and also the intensely hot core. Now the second component is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the gaseous layer that surrounds the Earth's surface and held to its surface by gravity. Hydrosphere is the part of the Earth which includes all the gaseous, liquid and solid water. It includes the Earth's ocean, seas, polar ice, glaciers, icebergs, lakes, rivers and streams. The fourth component is biosphere. Biosphere is the part that includes all zones of earth where life is present. It includes all the plants, animals and microorganisms present on earth. Much of the biosphere is contained within the shallow surface layer encompassing the lower part of atmosphere, the surface of geosphere and the region that lies approximately 100 or upper uh, 100 meters of ocean depth. So these components are overlapping and often interrelated. So any change in one of this component can affect other. So ecology is thus defined as a branch of science that deals with the study of natural environment, including the relations of organisms to one another and with their surroundings. And this word ecology is derived from two Greek words, oikos meaning home and logos means study. Thus, literally, ecology is the study of life at home with main emphasis on the pattern of relations between organisms and their surrounding environments. So the fundamental interactions among organisms and their non-living, that is the physical chemical environment constitute an interrelating and interdependent ever-changing system. This is known as the ecological system or ecosystem. So ecosystem has been considered as the basic functional unit of ecology and ecology is the study of ecosystem. So what is ecology? Ecology is a branch of science that deals with the study of relationship or interactions between the organisms and the uh, non-living components of the earth. That is the relations that exist between the biotic and the abiotic components. Now let us discuss about the structure of ecosystem. Ecosystem uh, is broadly, uh, it is divided into two important components. These are the abiotic components and the biotic components. Abiotic components means the entire non-living components of the ecosystem. This includes the physical components, physical factors, chemical factors, and edaphic factors. So ecosystem is thus, or the structure of ecosystem is thus created due to the interaction between the abiotic and the biotic components. We can see uh, the biotic and the abiotic components uh, shortly. So the biotic components are the entire living organisms that includes the plant, animal, and microorganisms. The abiotic components refer to the physical environment of the non-living factors. These include inorganic substances like carbon dioxide, water, nitrogen, calcium and phosphorus. These are involved in biogeochemical cycles. So the amount of these inorganic substances present at any given time in an ecosystem is known as the starting state or the standing quality of ecosystem. So what do you mean by a standing state or standing quality? Standing state refers to the amount of the inorganic substances present at any given time in the ecosystem. Now the abiotic components apart from the inorganic substances there are organic compounds like proteins, carbohydrates, amino acids and lipids and others which are synthesized by the biotic counterpart of an ecosystem. Then there is the climatic factors which includes uh, 
rain, light, temperature, humidity, wind and air and of course uh, edaphic factors. Edaphic factors are those related to soil like minerals, soil topography, the structure of soil, behavior of straw, I mean uh, the composition of soil. So all this come under the edaphic factor. So the important abiotic components includes inorganic substances, then organic substances which are synthesized by the biotic counterparts, then the climax factors and edaphic factors. Um, the ecosystem does appear distinct from each other with time and space, but functionally we can say that they are linked with each other. So there are different types of ecosystem like terrestrial ecosystem, which are known as biomes, then there is grassland ecosystem, forest ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem. But the important point is that the no ecosystems can exist alone. They are always in contact with the adjacent ecosystem. There exists no functional boundaries between them. So adjacent ecosystems interact with each other in order to make their structure and function. So all the, the different types of ecosystem are interrelated or they are mutually dependent. So the, there is a short or a region between the region that lies between or the boundary that lies between the two different ecosystem is known as transition zone. This transition zone is otherwise known as ecotone. So this ecotone or transition zone refers to the overlapping area between the two different ecosystems. Now coming to the biotic components, we know that biotic components refers to the living organisms of the earth. It includes plants animals and microorganisms based on their nutritional requirement that is how they get their food they are categorized into three groups producers uh, consumers and decomposers producers are mainly the green plants with chlorophyll which give them the ability to use solar energy to manufacture their own food they are known as photoautotrophs which includes green plants, herbs, shrubs, phytoplanktons, and mosses. Like so, all the green plants belong to the group photoautotrophs. Then there are chemosynthetic bacteria, uh, which can prepare food or they synthesize food in the absence of sunlight. They are known as chemoautotrophs. Uh, then uh, the second group of organisms or the biotic component, the second category is the consumer. Consumers lack chlorophyll. They depend on producers for food. So they are also called as heterotrophs. And uh, heterotrophs uh, includes herbivores, carnivores and detrivorous organisms. Now the third or the last component of the abiotic uh, world, is, oh, sorry, biotic uh, world is decomposers or saprotrophs. These are the microorganisms, bacteria and fungi which break down complex dead organic matters into simple inorganic forms. So the ecosystem, every ecosystem has their own set of producers, consumers and decomposers which are specific to that ecosystem. Now there are two important processes that keep the ecosystem functional. They are the flow of energy and material cycle. So uh, based on the kind of habitat, we can divide or we can uh, broadly divide the ecosystem into two groups. They are the aquatic ecosystem and the terrestrial ecosystem. The aquatic ecosystem includes marine and freshwater ecosystem, whereas terrestrial ecosystem includes the forest, grassland, desert, mountains, and all the man-made ecosystem. So in this class, we discussed very briefly about the important concepts of ecosystem. I mean, about the concept of ecosystem, the structure of ecosystem, the components of ecosystem. So in the coming classes, we'll uh, deal with each subject in detail. So thank you so much. Thank you.